though the first opponent that naruto would have to face would be a young darui now darui would look at naruto as they would be placed on a map where for the following next like literally 24 hours naruto would have to fight 300 opponents okay now you may be wondering how did naruto get placed in that position well i'm here to let you guys know what's up ladies and gentlemen it is your boys that are here aka the guy your girl tells you not to worry about back at it again to drop as you guys see from the title and thumbnail what if naruto was mihawk's reincarnation now obviously if you guys saw the title you guys will see that this is the 30k special thank you guys so much for getting me here but before i say anything more there will be a time step up on screen right now in case you don't want to hear any any of the sentimental you know cliche thank you guys so much for getting me to 30k then just click on that and you guys can skip over to the main story that being said though if you're here and you want to listen to it i just want to say guys like first and foremost thank you so much for getting me to 30,000 subscribers now on behalf of the fact that it's like we're in the christmas season you know what i mean and we're around the time where you know i made it 30k i tripled my goal that i wanted to get to the for the year and i'm i'm just so thankful for you guys honestly like i never once in my life thought i would be able to mass 30,000 subscribers let alone a thousand if you guys even were to go back and watch my 1,000 subscriber video you guys would probably see how excited i was i literally yelled out i was like let's go you know what i mean i was going crazy i thought that i i i, I just destroyed the world you know what i mean i was thinking i was big stuff but now 30k later now my goal is a hundred thousand subscribers and with that comes other goals I don't simply want to be a YouTuber. So I, I ended up coming up with an idea. Seeing as it's a season of giving, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna do a giveaway. And if I do a giveaway, I'm gonna do it right. All right, look, for the season, I'm going to be doing two separate giveaways. Originally, I was going to be giving away an Xbox Series X, but I decided, you know what? How about I do two giveaways and help myself out and help out a couple of fans. The way that this will work is essentially as long as you basically have your post notifications turned on for this channel and you subscribe i will basically just be you know looking through the comments and just picking a subscriber psych you thought that doesn't work how am i supposed to pick somebody out from that no the way that this is actually going to be working is simply i have a tiktok all right i'm making a tiktok and i want to upload anime related videos like simple what ifs and with that i wanted to see how many people i can get so all you really have to do in order to be entered to the giveaway is simply go follow my TikTok. Link will be down below in the description. And also, in case you want a better chance, just go down below and say I followed. All right. If you do that, you will be automatically entered. And one of these days, the day before Christmas, the 24th, I will be announcing the winner of the giveaway. That being said, though, guys, I hope you guys do go on to enjoy the video. Hey, Ross, sauce it up. So the tale of what if Naruto is Mihawk's reincarnation all starts off on the day of Naruto's birth. Now, this story is all pretty much going to be starting when Minato and Kushina give birth to a Naruto. Now, when Naruto was born, obviously the Nine Tails incident is still going to be happening, and there will honestly be zero changes to the story other than the fact that Naruto is actually going to be looking just like Mihawk from One Piece. Now, in case you guys don't know who Mihawk is, then there will be a video linked down below in the description to pretty much explain him. He's pretty much just Zoro, but a million times better, stronger, and yeah, just pretty much Zoro, but like on crack in terms of physical strength not in terms of character because if i'm being honest i think zoro is just a way better character than mihawk but that's just my opinion that being said though obviously naruto in this version of event is going to be needing some reason for himself to be getting into swordsmanship and this will start when naruto was four years old now, in this version of events, Naruto will not actually be getting kicked out of Hiro's mansion at the age of four. Instead, let's just say that it happens around the age of six years old or seven, just because in this version, ninja students are only going to be becoming academy students at the age of 16 years old because they were like, yo, pause, we ain't trying to have 12 year olds running around becoming ninjas, you know what I mean? So they, you know, kind of held the age back a little bit. And with that comes Naruto. Uh, excuse me, comes Naruto essentially having a lot of extra years in order to hone his swordsmanship and abilities. 
And so, with that, we basically have Naruto going into, Lord, you know, Lord Third's office. Now, it's on this day where Naruto is basically trying to go in there to ask Hiruzen a question. But when he does this, he sees a man with two swords on his, you know, on, on his waist, just walking towards Hiruzen's office. Now, Naruto, being curious as to why he has two, would walk on in there. And this is when Naruto would walk in through the doors. He would say, hey, uh, who are you? He would basically tug on the man's leg as he would say, oh, who's this lord third as you know Haruzen would just look at him and he would say oh that's just naruto he's he's just basically says uh you know he's raising him and so the man would say that's interesting as you know he would get down to his eye level and say what's up little man ruffling up naruto's hair immediately naruto would basically look at the man as he would say why do you have two swords and the man would immediately whip out both blades as he would begin to spin them in his hands saying that i have them because i i live the way of the sword as Naruto would just be like, the way of the sword? Confused, you know what I mean? And so, the man would just look towards Naruto's direction and say, oh, yeah, well, let me explain. He would proceed to take out two blades as he would just ask Hiruzen if he doesn't mind if he was to explain something. Hiruzen would say he doesn't at all, and this is when the man would show a demonstration of his swordsmanship and abilities, simply just twirling the swords around, showing Naruto the finesse, and, you know, just, just the... Just the raw skill that this man possesses when it comes to wielding a sword. Naruto seeing all of this would actually be quite intrigued. And this one Naruto would actually wonder if he could ever become as powerful as this man. The man would immediately say that anybody can. As long as you study the art of swordsmanship and train to your heart's content, anybody can become a powerful swordsman. Now these words would resonate in Naruto's head, but he would think that that's not true. Not anybody can probably get as good as this man could. So, Naruto keeping this in the back of his mind, would proceed to go to the Konoha library, where of course, he would end up finding a bunch of books on swordsmanship and how to wield kanjutsu. And in case you don't know what that is, it's basically just how what swordsmanship is called in the Naruto universe. So, ninjutsu is, you know, jutsu. Um, taijutsu is, you know, fighting with your bare hands. And then there's kenjutsu, which is essentially using a sword. Now, when Naruto reads up on all this stuff, he would pretty much end up spending about two years of his life, essentially beginning to try to learn what it is that swordsmanship is and how, you know, wielding a sword works. Literally just studying how swords are made, studying how people wield them, studying different martial arts styles on swordsmanships. And one that Naruto would just simply be very drawn into is the one that Mihawk uses. Now, I'm not gonna lie. The name of the sword style that he uses completely just slipped my mind at this point. I'd probably have to look it up, but I don't feel like it. But I'm pretty sure many of you guys can probably like already know which, which style it is. And so, Naruto would pretty much just end up studying that simple style for the following two years. When one day, Naruto decides that it's about time for him to finally give it a try. After studying swordsmanship for all this time, Naruto decides that it's about time that he actually picks up a sword and does something with it. And so, for Naruto's sixth birthday, he would ask Hiruzen if he could maybe get him a sword. Hiruzen would do so, buying him a very, you know, very decent sword. It's like a middle class sword, not, not something that some swordsman master would use, but not something for a rookie. You know, it's a very good high status sword. And so, Naruto grabbing this blade would begin to simply start twirling it like in the books. And Hiruzen seeing this would ask Naruto if he's ever wielded a blade before. Naruto would turn towards Haruzen's direction saying that no, he hasn't wielded a blade ever in his life actually. As Haruzen would look at Naruto and be like, you've never held a blade? Naruto would say, no, I've just been reading up about it in the library, with Haruzen being in complete shock. This is when Naruto would just be like, alright, well, old man, I'm just gonna go train with this for a while. As Haruzen would just be like, wait, Naruto, and before he knows it, literally Naruto for four years would essentially spend like literally training on a swordsmanship abilities now naruto would have been four years old when he was essentially like learning and studying you know how the abilities of a sword works and we're going to be saying that instead of training for four years with the sword instead we're going to be having a literal gigantic eight year time skip now during this time naruto would have essentially been training in the forest of death for hours and hours on end perfecting his craft over and over and over and after about one year of training on wielding the sword and learning the fundamentals of swordsmanship relatively quickly meaning that naruto it's not like naruto just learned the basic fundamentals naruto learned very very specific fundamentals but naruto noticed he wasn't 
advance anymore. So what Naruto does is he decides to go to a swordsman, you know, Dorjo, asking Hiruzen if there's any way that he can go fight some people from like any place to, you know, test his abilities. Hiruzen hearing this from Naruto would basically ask an Anbu to essentially spar with Naruto for a little bit. And the way that this would go down is Naruto would simply take off his hoodie because this is kind of just the drip that Naruto's been wearing for a while. He wears a maroon hoodie, some black like Konoha pants and just the, you know, the average Shinobi shoes as you know he just puts that on he grabs uh his sword off of his you know his little sheath that he has on his back and naruto would simply aim it right at the anbu member now the anbu member would take out a kunai and rush at naruto and they would essentially run past each other in sort of anime swordsman style however after naruto runs past the man he would sheath the blade back where it goes and the anbu ninja would fall down to the ground with a gigantic slash going across his chest Naruto would smirk as he thinks that it's definitely been working. As Haruzen's jaw would just drop, thinking he just defeated an Anbu member. Now, obviously, guys, keep in mind, Anbu members are pretty much fodder compared to the actual main cast of characters. Because when we really think about it, our, you know, our Genin students basically be out here clapping ninjas on the level of these Anbu all the time. But that's probably not until they get to the tuning exams area. So, you know, they obviously have a lot, a lot, a lot of time to go. But Naruto at this point is literally just at the age of, let's say, let's say eight years old, right? Let's say he's like, wait, no, because I said, I said he was four. He studied for two years, making him six, and then he trained for one year. All right, yeah, no, he's seven. All right, he's going to be seven years old, and, uh, oh, sorry for my dog barking in the background, but he's going to be seven years old, and so Naruto would basically proceed to um, just kind of just kind of relax, you know what I mean? Like, oh, no, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. I'm, I'm completely, like, forgetting what I was talking about. After Naruto basically sheaths his blade, he would proceed to turn towards Haruzen as he would ask him if he's advanced any further than what he remembers. Now, simultaneously, we would basically have the man who first came in to essentially show Naruto what swordsmanship even was. Now, the man would essentially walk over towards the direction of Naruto and say, Oi, Lord Thirst. Is that the small boy that I met years ago? As Haruzen would nod his head saying it is. Now at this man, this man would be very, very old and he would actually end up asking Naruto if he's gotten anywhere with the sword of his. Naruto would smile saying that he actually has and that he really loves the art of swordsmanship. And the man would simply learn turn towards Naruto as he would say that he's very happy to hear that. He would ask Naruto if he's willing to have a sparring session. And this is when Naruto would have a gigantic smile go across his face. Immediately, Hiruzen would ask if they could actually, you know, he can watch. And immediately, they would end up going outside towards a training area where Naruto and this man would both turn towards each other. It is at this point where they would clash blades for the following next three hours. Now, of course, this swordsman was holding back quite a decent amount but he was definitely trying you know he it's not like he was holding back all of his power and it's like it's not like he's only using five percent but this man was definitely giving it at least 50 percent of his abilities now keep in mind this man is very old and his prime state probably would have cooked naruto in an instant but seeing as this man is just way out of his prime it just wouldn't be a contest and so it would be Naruto versus this man for a solid three hours. Now, the name of this swordsman would actually be Saijima. And this is when Naruto would essentially end up pretty much being stalemated by the man. As he would sheath his sword back in saying that he's gotten so far. He has never met another young young boy just like him who's been able to wield the sword as well as he has in just the span of three years. Naruto would smile thinking, you know, thank you. As it's at this point that we would just have Haruzen just shocked at the fact that Naruto was able to keep up with this ninja. Who Haruzen actually hires for very high ranking missions. Very important ones at that. And so, Hiruzen would actually end up asking him if he can maybe teach him a couple more things. To which the man would smile, saying that he actually had the same idea. And now it's at this point where Naruto would simply look at the man as he would ask Naruto one question. How would you like to come train under me for the following years? I can teach you anything and everything you want to know about the sword. Now Naruto would end up smiling, thinking that that honestly sounds great. And so... For the following entirety of the time until Naruto is, let's say, 13 years old, Naruto would literally leave the village on a training journey with this man.
Now, when they leave, Naruto would end up basically going on this journey with this man. And the first two years would essentially consist of Naruto getting it, getting like literally at the same level as this man in two years. This man would start to train Naruto in very, very hard ways. He would actually take him to a bunch of different like places that specialize in, you know, Kenjutsu. So like a bunch of dojos that have a bunch of people learning the way of the sword. And Naruto would literally have to go to dojo by dojo, defeating the master and the students. And that's literally what Deku, uh, did I really just say Deku? No, Naruto would do. Now, this is when at one point we would have it to which the man would say that for his final test, when Naruto was 13 years old, he would pretty much end up walking to the same dojo where that same that very same man was trained at. Now, this place would be at the land of the Hidden Clouds Village. Naruto would walk into this dojo as he would see a man with eight, eight, um, with eight swords. Or no, was it six? I don't know. It's Killer B, all right? It's Killer B point, point, just to be shown. It's Killer B, all right? Now, Naruto would proceed to walk into the dojo, and at this point, Naruto was battle scarred. Actually, not battle scarred. He has literally never received a single injury in his entire time of being a swordsman and wielding a sword. And when he would walk in there, he would immediately be greeted by a bunch of people, hundreds, all right? Now, Naruto would walk inside and walk over towards the leader, which is actually going to be Raikage A. He would end up asking him if he can challenge the master. And now Raikage would laugh. He would begin to say that, kid, there's no way you could challenge me or my brother B, the, the second in command, if you weren't even able to defeat the pawns here. So prove yourself and maybe I'll entertain this conversation. Just chuckling, thinking to himself that there's no way some kid is going to be able to pose any possible threat. And so, the first opponent that Naruto would have to face would be a young Darui. Now, Darui would look at Naruto as they would be placed on a map where for the following next, like, literally 24 hours, Naruto would have to fight 300 opponents. 300 opponents, cutting each and every single one of them, returning without a slash. Naruto, after defeating all of them, would proceed to turn his attentions towards Killer B, as he would say that he's tired of these games and that he wants to finally face the strongest. He would turn towards him as he would say, you, you're the Hokage of this village, right? You're the Raikage, right? As you know, Kill, uh, Raikage A would say he is. He would simply tell the Raikage that he does not he's not even interested in facing him. He doesn't even wield the sword. As the Raikage would be, you know, he, his feelings would be a little hurt, you know what I mean? And so, the Raikage would be like, <laughs> just kind of scoffing at this notion that some kid literally just turned him down. But, he would simply walk out of there as he would say, Killer B, put this kid in his place. And immediately, Naruto would smile, thinking that, yes, he's finally going to be able to, you know, fight against someone powerful. And so, B would simply take out a bunch of swords and four arms would come out of his back as it has now been 24 hours since Naruto has had non-stop duels. And with this comes B having a very, very high advantage when it comes to stamina. And so as soon as the battle starts, Naruto would decide that this all needs to end immediately. And so, what Naruto would do is he would actually ask Saijima to, to, you know, lend him his sword. Saijima would do so, throwing Naruto his sword as he now has two blades. And immediately, Killer B would rush at Naruto's direction, slashing in multiple directions, with Naruto just dodging and weaving and, you know, basically hitting back his blades, using all of his, like, strength that he can possibly muster, which is actually a lot, seeing as, you know, Mihawk is very, very powerful physically. And with these two swords, Naruto would actually be holding his own against a Killer B, who was giving it about half of his effort. Now, Killer B would smile and start pretty much rapping out of nowhere, saying, your skills are, you know, dollar bills, and you look like you're gonna get a chill because, ooh, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? It's, he's going crazy. These bars are going triple plastic, you know what I mean? And so, we basically just have it to which Naruto was getting annoyed, and he pretty much just ends up deciding that, yeah, he's done. And so, Naruto would use an ability that he's picked up during these last couple of years to use observation hockey. Now, many of you guys are probably like, yo, pause. When did Naruto learn observation hockey? What's going on? Naruto, yeah, Naruto is a prodigy among prodigies. Now, I'm not going to lie. 
the, the, the concept of hockey is one of those that I honestly still haven't been able to understand how a lot of people in the One Piece universe just randomly get it. But I'm just going to be saying that Naruto is so much of a prodigy. Not only that, but he's also the reincarnation of Mihawk, a hockey user, a conqueror hockey user. And so Naruto's hockey, very, very powerful. And not only that, but he definitely is going to be having those hawk eyes that Mihawk has. And so we basically just have it. So Naruto essentially just turns to Killer B's direction and reads this man like an absolute book. Like at this point, Naruto stops playing at all with his food. And B would rush at Naruto's direction as Naruto would simply block his attack with one blade blocking all six swords mind you with one blade and he then proceeds to stab right into killer b's chest as he slashes his sword down and literally begins to walk away after severely injuring the eight tails in Churiki. immediately naruto would simply begin to walk away as b would start being healed by his tail you know his tail beast that he has inside of himself as we B would weakly stand up he would simply say to himself that that kid will never best him in combat again and he would stand up and after this point naruto would continue training just like this eventually just getting bored naruto would be so powerful by the end of this time skip that it would just be so boring to him to ever have to fight anybody again Naruto during this time would have, ended up would have ended up growing to have a very stoic and very serious personality where he really doesn't smile much and he mostly just kind of likes to get things over with. He just likes relaxing, honestly. And so the only real things that Naruto likes doing is training and relaxing. And Naruto's only goal in this life is to be given a challenge. At this point, Sajima has actually passed away due to old age and Naruto would have returned to the village at the age of 13. By the time that he finally felt as if he was ready to return to the village keep in mind naruto went throughout all of the lands and just started destroying dojos left and right left and right he just started completely massacring every single person who wields a sword literally put literally at one point putting his boot his literal boot on top of the head of one of the masters one of the actual five no no, no. let's say that naruto would you know what Let's actually talk about one other person who we would end up fighting during this time skip. He would have ended up embarrassing a lot of masters, you know, obviously making them bow down before him. But the person who he did the worst was one of the legendary seven ninja swordsmen, Zabuza Momoichi. Now, during this time, obviously Zabuza was already in the midst of chaining Haku. And at this point, he was at a younger stage than what he was when he fought against Zabuza, uh, Kakashi. So, one day, Naruto, after Saijima had already passed, Naruto had inherited both swords. And during this time, Naruto decided that it would be about the time to pretty much end up, you know, fighting against a worthy opponent. And so, with that, came Naruto wandering across one man who Naruto had simply been looking for, Zabuza Momoichi. Now, Naruto obviously knows about the bingo book, and seeing that he is one of the legendary seven swordsmen of the mist would definitely be very intrigued with fighting him. So as soon as he senses this very strong presence, Naruto would walk over towards the direction of Zabuza who was currently training Haku, and would ask him to spar. Zabuza would say to piss off if he doesn't want to die, but Naruto would simply take out a sword and chuckle saying that they're fighting now. He would blitz right at Haku's, right at Zabuza's direction, but Haku would rush in front of Naruto and Naruto would simply slice Haku's head clean off and say, don't get in my way. If I want to fight, I'm gonna get one. Now, as soon as Zabuza sees this, he was like, my tool. Because at this point, Zabuza still hasn't been humanized by Naruto's talk no jutsu. And so, immediately Zabuza would be bloodlusted. He would immediately grab his blade off of his back as he would say he's gonna wish he never lived. And at this point, Zabuza would rush at Naruto's direction. This battle would literally go on for about, let's say, mm, let's say 15 minutes. Because Naruto was simply trying to have fun. Zabuza tried using all of his attacks, the mist jutsu, fighting in the water, trying to have it so that Naruto couldn't see him, but Naruto had observation hockey. 
Not only that, but Naruto also had armament hockey, which he actually learned how to infuse into his blade. With that, he also learned chakra control, or at least the fundamentals of it, meaning he knows how to tree walk, water walk. He also knows how to incorporate chakra into his own physical body, enhancing it, as well as enhancing his blade. So imagine a blade that literally has the strength of Mihawk, the strength of Conqueror, the strength of, no, not Conqueror Hockey, not yet, not yet, but the strength of Armament Hockey and the same, you know, ability that he uses to pretty much coat his swords so that they can't take any damage, as well as Chakra, and you just have a beast of another world, right? After this, Naruto would simply chuckle saying that, you know, he's bored. And at this point, Naruto would slash at Zabuza right across the chest over and over and over literally leaving a tic-tac-toe pattern he slashed at him leaving a tic-tac-toe board and then created three x's down the middle with two o's literally just showing how much skill naruto has with the sword and at this point zabuza would fall down to both knees as naruto would grab zabuza's sword which he flung out of his hand mind you and he would proceed to put put his boot over zabuza's head literally crushing zabuza's face into the pavement saying that you don't deserve to be calling yourself a swordsman that you shame that sword that you wield by simply existing as at this point naruto would proceed to look at zabuza as he grabs his blade and says he doesn't even deserve to his death by naruto's hand and so naruto would grab zabuza's blade and literally leave like just leave zabuza on the ground near death it's at this point that zabuza would be picked up by another random like villager that's nearby and he would have been nursed back to health and at this point zabuza has one mission to defeat that kid who embarrassed him killed his tool and left him in a sorry state and so at this point naruto would be 13 years old returning towards the village after completing his character arc or his training montage and at this point naruto was 13 years old now with that said naruto returning to the village would have basically came back with longer hair with like his hoodie and pretty much shambles and instead of wearing what he normally would wear he would actually return to the village with a different outfit on the mihawk trademark outfit the same one that we all see in the thumbnail and at this point naruto simply looks like a like a kid version of mihawk without the beard the mustache or anything and he pretty much just ends up just kind of looking at haruzen as haruzen sees those golden eyes and just immediately realizes that's naruto now the second that naruto steps in haruzen would simply ask naruto how far his training has gotten him and naruto would simply smirk just thinking that it's gotten boring Hiruzen would question what he means by that, and Naruto would simply say nothing, as he would just ask Hiruzen if the Ninja Academy has already started. Hiruzen would tell Naruto that it has, and Naruto would say that he might as well get to it then, as he would walk out of there and literally walk into the Academy mid-class. At this point, they've already started the Academy training for about one month, and Naruto would just walk into the classroom saying, hey, sorry I'm late. Iruka would immediately look at Naruto asking who he is and at this point the, the secret of Naruto being the nine tails in Cherokee hasn't even spread and so with that we basically just have it to which Naruto sits down at the desk and just basically sits down right next to some random nobody character. At this point, Iruka continues explaining his, mesh, mis, uh, his lesson, telling all the kids what they have to do in the ninja world, and the kid would actually ask Naruto a question. What's his name? Naruto would turn towards his direction, saying that he doesn't speak to the weak, as he would just stay quiet, and Iruka would finally finish his lesson. After this, they would have some basic sparring, and the person that Naruto would have to spar against would be Sasuke. Now, it's at this point that Naruto would just display his raw physical power. Naruto would literally pick up a little toothpick off of the ground as Iruka would say go and Sasuke would start to laugh as he just sees that Naruto's holding a little toothpick in his hand. Immediately Sasuke would rush at Naruto's direction and Naruto would like literally we like like just bring the little toothpick down to the ground it's like slashing the air with him. It's at this point that a gigantic gust of wind and just like sharp edges would just come flying right at Sasuke's direction. And Sasuke would barely be able to dodge it. But when he does this, there would actually be a tree far behind him that would literally be sliced right in half. Like towards, you know how trees are normally standing up? Now it didn't slice it in half to where the tree like literally stumbled and like flopped over how normal people cut trees. He cut it from the top to bottom with how powerful this slash was 
and Sasuke seeing this would have literally jumped out of the way of the entire little circle. Naruto at this point would drop the toothpick and walk off as Iruka is just shocked at this just completely overpowered display of power from Naruto. And Sasuke would just literally have so much sweat dripping down from his face thinking that there is no way that this kid is this powerful. But Naruto would simply walk off as at this point, the following three years would go by in a flash. And during this entire time, Naruto has been training, lifting heavy, heavy weights and getting even more powerful with the sword, thinking that maybe someday he'll finally have a challenge. And so Naruto would just basically, you know, be sitting down at his desk when it's finally the day of the academy time. And at this point, they're all assigned their Jonin senseis, with Naruto being put on the team of Sakura and Sasuke. But as soon as Naruto hears this, he simply says that that's a pitiful team. He doesn't even need a team. If anything, he can be a one-man squadron. But Iruka would turn towards Naruto saying that it doesn't work like that. If you're in the Ninja Academy and you want to become a Genin, you need to have a team. You're only going to be alone by the time you become a Jonin. And Naruto would simply scoff as he would just say, whatever, I'll become a Jonin then. Whatever rank you need, but I guess I don't really need that in, at all. But Naruto, Naruto really doesn't. Because in the bingo book, Naruto has millions and millions of um, of a bounty on his head. Naruto's bounty is even bigger than that of Kisame. Now, just to put that into perspective, Naruto's bounty is bigger than the bounty of an Akatsuki member. That just comes to show how powerful this man is. He, his bounty is even higher than Daedara's and Sasori's combined. And so... Naruto is very, very strong and also very well known throughout all the five great nations. And so with that comes, you know, him just kind of laying down in the classroom, really not doing anything until Kakashi finally arrives two hours later. Naruto wouldn't even question it. And when Kakashi says go up to the roof, Naruto would do just as he was told, walking over there kind of lazily as Kakashi would ask everybody what their goals are. Now, as I stated earlier, Naruto's only real goal is to finally find a challenge, somebody who can excite him and also become the most powerful swordsman in the world. With that, Sasuke would say that he wants to surpass somebody and kill some someone, and Sakura would just be a trash bag like usual. Now, at this point, Kakashi would tell everybody to meet him at a certain location the next day, to which everybody would say, sure thing, and Kakashi would then proceed to literally leave. It's at this point that the team would arrive to the location that Kakashi set the, the, you know, the day before that, and when Naruto notices that Kakashi isn't there, he simply sits down with, with, um, with the blade that Zabuza had. And mind you, I forgot to mention something, but he would literally have a gigantic blade on his back. Yoru. That's literally the, the name of his blade that he named. Now, if you guys do remember, Naruto took Zabuza's blade. That was around when he was at the age of 12 years old. After that, he ended up wandering around the world and just gaining more of a notoriety for himself. And when he was finally done and returned to the village, he proceeded to go to Ten Ten's weapon shop and have the weapon of Zabuza melted down and turned into an even greater weapon. So this weapon still has the ability to pretty much heal itself with blood. And Naruto wields Yori. The, one of the strongest blades in all existence because it's wielded by naruto and so we basically just have it to which naruto is just kind of chilling doing some image training in his mind naruto lays down for about three hours simply training fighting himself in his mindscape nothing else fighting himself and behind that would be a gigantic fox in a cage naruto would rush at himself as he cuts his blade and he ends up defeating himself and after this three hours would have passed to which kakashi would say hey as he would snap his finger saying naruto naruto would wake up and you know snap back out of it as he's just like huh with kakashi saying come on we're starting he would explain what the bell test is to naruto and at this point that naruto would say all right sounds simple enough Kakashi would say, all right, as Sasuke would look at Naruto with like a just very like angry look on his face saying that, you know, I bet Naruto's gotten even stronger throughout this time because Naruto, you know, he kind of never really trained in the eyes of Sasuke or so Sasuke thought that Naruto never trained, but Naruto did definitely train in the comfort of his own home. And so 
As soon as the as soon as the little bell test started, Naruto proceeded to simply blitz at Kakashi's direction at a speed which Kakashi's Sharingan couldn't even keep up with. Now, obviously Kakashi has his Sharingan covered, but if he was to have had it out, Kakashi Sharingan would not have been able to, you know, keep up with Naruto's movements even in a hundred years. And so we basically have it to which Naruto steals the bells immediately and looks towards Kakashi's directions, pretty much saying that that's it. As he would take the bells and throw them at his teammate, as he would just say that he doesn't need a team. He would walk off, but Kakashi would stop him saying, wait, you pass, all of you pass. Saying that, you know, those who abandon their teammates are scum, but those who abandon their teammates are worse than scum. Kakashi would have ended up thinking that, you know, Naruto ended up giving them the bells because he would rather take it again and they could, you know, go on to become a team. And so they would end up basically being assigned Team 7. After this, they would go on about two weeks worth of horrible, just garbage missions until finally we have it to which um, Gato and, you know, the little Land of the Waves missions, you know, is basically thrown into the lap by Hiruzen. Now, knowing that he has both Naruto and Kakashi on one team, this mission would actually be ranked a B rank mission. And the reason that, you know, Hiruzen is actually fine with that is because of the fact that Naruto's on the team. Hiruzen knows how powerful Naruto has become during these years, and it's basically like having two S rank Jonin on their squad. And so, we basically just have it to which they start walking. Now, immediately once they're 30 minutes into their journey, they would notice a very weak Genjutsu. Naruto would simply slash his blade into the air as the, the blade would end up cutting down like literally hundreds of trees as well as cutting the demon brothers in half. They would continue to walk as they would just keep keep going keep going for about two hours until finally out of nowhere a very thick fog would come in out of nowhere. Now this would be Zabuza and it's at this point that Zabuza would land on top of a blade not the executioner's blade but he would land on top of a blade now zabuza would look at kakashi as he would say kakashi the 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 copycat ninja of the leaf and kakashi would end up noticing that this is zabuza actually being on high 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 um alert because this zabuza is at least 10 times stronger than the one in the original and so zabuza would look at kakashi and say huh, it's just your lucky day kakashi but i guess i'm gonna make it make you have a chance of leaving out, out with your life he would look at kakashi as he would say if you give me the bridge builder i'll spare you and turn the other way but this is when he would lay his eyes on naruto and those golden eyes would stare daggers into zabuza's soul zabuza seeing naruto would immediately be enraged as he would say it's you immediately he would jump down from the sword as he would grab it and aim it towards naruto's direction as he would look at kakashi and say this doesn't concern him to get out of the way kakashi would be like thrown aback because he's like what you you gonna fight my 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 genin teammate instead of me what are you doing you know what i mean and zabuza would just look at you know naruto as naruto would chuckle saying you really think that a couple of years worth of training and you're magically going to be able to be strong than Naruto would chuckle to himself, as this is one of the few times that Naruto would laugh. Naruto would take out his sword, his big sword, as he would say, I should have finished you off the day that I met you. And Naruto would proceed to simply look at Zabuza's direction, as he would say that he doesn't even deserve to be hit with his sword. As it's at this point that Naruto would quite literally proceed to look at Kakashi as he would ask for a kunai. Kakashi would throw it at Naruto's direction. With Naruto spinning the kunai in his hand, he would then aim it at Zabuza's direction and Zabuza would say, you dare disrespect me. He would blitz at Naruto's direction and he would literally leave after images by how fast Zabuza is moving. He would come down and try to strike at Naruto, but Naruto would dodge each and every single one of his blade strikes with a kunai. And it's at this point that Zabuza would notice that Naruto hasn't even begun to break a sweat at this point. With Naruto simply looking at Zabuza saying, so you noticed, huh? I haven't even started trying yet. Not only that, but you haven't even left a dent in my sword. Zabuza noticing this would say, there's no way. But it's at the same moment that Zabuza's vision would be split in eight. As Naruto would have literally cut Zabuza into so many little pieces, he diced Zabuza's body, and Zabuza's eyes just were cut into eight little pieces. As Zabuza just fell apart in front of the team, and Kakashi was shocked. 
literally in disbelief at how easily Naruto was able to handle a threat that Kakashi would have easily lost to. Now at this point, they would continue walking the bridge builder over to the land of the waves, and when Gato stepped in, Kakashi and Sasuke were the ones to handle it. After this point, we would basically have it to where they return back to the village and Kakashi ends up explaining to Lord Third what happened on that mission. With Lord Third being shocked, actually telling Naruto that he can definitely become a Jonin after that. But Naruto would say that that's the easy way out. He wants to show everybody how much stronger he is than them. And so, with that, he would end up entering the Chunin exams. Now, I'm not really going to bore you guys with any of the details of Rock Lee fighting against Sasuke with, you know, Sasuke taking a fat, gigantic L or them, you know, taking the little test. So we're going to be skipping straight to the Forest of Death. Now, in the Forest of Death, we would basically have it to which Naruto would turn straight at uh, the direction of, you know, Sasuke and his teammates. As he would say that, you know, they can just follow him and Sasuke and Sakura would both actually do exactly what Naruto says. Sasuke is aware of how much power Naruto has and during this time Sasuke has actually been wondering if Naruto is even stronger than his brother. Now that's a question that I'm going to be leaving up to you guys. But it's at this point that Naruto would simply say that he's going to be fighting his opponents very very soon. Naruto would use his observation hockey to sense who the most powerful person in this entire forest is. Now, that's when his eyes would lock onto a target which is approaching them at very rapid speeds. This would be Orochimaru. And as soon as Naruto senses this, Naruto would say that finally, someone semi-powerful is approaching them. He would turn towards his team as he would say that they need to get out of here, as he would say that this is going to be fun. And it's at this point that Naruto would look at Orochimaru as he lands. At this point, Naruto would take his blade off of his back as he would say, Alright, what's your deal? Orochimaru would lick his lips as he would say, Sasuke, so close yet so far. He would turn towards Naruto's direction as he would say, I've seen you in the bingo book. Your body might be even more powerful than this young Uchiha. As he would then look at Naruto and see no fear in his eyes, nothing, expressionless. Naruto would look at Orochimaru as he simply says that if all he's going to do is talk, then he'll cut him down right here, right now. He would literally cut Nar uh, Orochimaru in half, but Orochimaru would use the, regurgita the regurgitation jutsu as he would come out of his own mouth. And at this point, Orochimaru would open his own mouth wide as he would literally take out the Kusanagi blade from his throat. At this point, Orochimaru would look at Naruto, but right as soon as he would turn in his direction, Naruto would cut Orochimaru down into pieces. And Orochimaru's body would quite literally fall into little pieces of diced ham. Orochimaru's body would hit the ground as he never even got the chance to bite Sasuke. And so, they end up basically taking a scroll with after this, Naruto rushing at Gara's direction saying that he might be a challenge. And so, Naruto actually ends up stopping a bunch of Genin from getting crushed by the sand coffin. With that, Naruto turned towards Gara's direction saying that he wants a challenge. With Gara saying that he'll die, he needs blood, blood. As he would rush at Naruto's direction, Naruto would hold his sword out as he would block all of Gara's attacks. And Gara would begin to get very, very angry. With Naruto slashing at Gara, causing Gara to see his blood for the first time, transforming into the gigantic Shukaku state. Now, as soon as Naruto sees this, Naruto would simply chuckle as he would say he might even be able to use half of his power. And so, Naruto would literally charge up one of his most powerful attacks as he would slash at the air and just the, the simple wind pressure from the slice would be able to cut Shukaku's ice, uh, no not ice, but sand in half as well as two mountains behind it. Two entire mountains and Shukaku in half, obliterating them. After this, Shukaku just dissipates and Gara's body falls onto the ground with, you know, Konkuro and Tamari catching him midair. At this point, Naruto and his team would basically make it back to the tower and once this is all over, Naruto would say that he is so incredibly bored. It's at this point that Hiruzen would be like, yep, nope, no, Naruto's not participating in the tuning exams. He literally took out almost everybody. If we let it happen, nobody else is going to be the, given the chance. And so, they end up appointing Naruto the role of a Joni. Naruto hearing this would say, alright, I'll take your offer on that. And it's at this point that Naruto would simply turn towards uh, you know, Kakashi's direction as he would say, 
by the way, I'm gonna be leaving Team Seven with just just Kakashi just shocked. Like, what what do you mean you're gonna be leaving Team Seven? Naruto would say that there's no real purpose for him to be here. Every single person in this Leaf Village is weak compared to him, with the only person who might even potentially be able to give him a challenge being the old man here. But seeing as I've already fought him and that didn't go too well for him, then I suppose I'm taking my leave now. You just, Haruzum would look down at the ground as he starts just being like, yo, pause, you weren't supposed to tell people that. And Naruto would simply look at Haruzum's direction as he would just he would just like smile and wait, grabbing all of his things and leaving, embarking on yet another journey. However, this time Naruto's goal is to find a group by the name of the Akatsuki. Now, the Akatsuki in this version are of course still going to be hunting down tailed beasts. And Naruto has heard about a very powerful swords user in the Akatsuki group, that of Kisame. And with that, Naruto literally embarks to find the Akatsuki. But I could keep going on about how Naruto just obliterates the Akatsuki and just like, just completely, just, 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 just. <laughs> the Akatsuki members right on the cheeks. But. I think that that's a pretty good place to leave off the story of what if Naruto was Mihawk's reincarnation. This man is pretty much the one punch man of One Piece. We don't truly know that much about him. And the only little things we do know is just that he's very powerful. We haven't seen the extent of his power. He trains Zoro and he's pretty much a dry, a, a stale popsicle. You know what I mean? So it's like there wasn't really too many directions that he could have taken with the story. Other than making Naruto really OP because of the fact that he's going to have Chakra, Haki, uh, Mihawk's just completely absurd swordsmanship abilities, and I honestly believe that this was just a very, very solid place to leave the story off on. If you guys thought so as well, definitely make sure to go down below and leave a comment let me, letting me know what your favorite part of the video was. With that being said, I love each and every single one of you guys. It has been your boy Zether, and I am out. Peace.